Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Future of Legal Technology 2024 webinar. First, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm the Director of Product Marketing here at Assembly Software. We are the creators of Neos, the superlative cloud-based case management platform. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our two panelists. We have Frank Nunez and Paul Hernandez. Frank is the CEO of Nunez Law in Fresno, California. He's respected widely in both the local court systems and the community and dedicates himself to clients facing cha challenging circumstances. Frank became in-house counsel for a national insurance company prior to opening his own practice in 2007. Thanks for joining us, Frank. <clears throat> pleasure. Paul, thank you. Paul Hernandez is the president of Calpus and Nackman, one of the largest personal injury workers comp and social security disability firms in Virginia. Paul holds the position of vice president on the executive council at the Virginia Trial Lawyers Association and has earned the distinction of being a super lawyer for more than 15 years. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we are going to kick it off. <clears throat> you know, technology is only useful if it helps you meet your business goals. For example, making your firm more efficient, productive, and profitable. In this webinar, we're going to discuss how two tech forward lawyers have successfully leveraged technology to improve their law firm's operations and meet their key, uh, key business goals. You know, some law firms aren't focused on saving time because of their business model, but maybe they could generate more revenue with less effort or cut costs using technology to improve their bottom line. <clears throat> so you're gonna learn a lot of great information during this webinar. Very, very excited to kick it off. Let's start with the flavor of the week, artificial intelligence. Tell me, Frank, how are you currently using AI at your law firm to meet your business goals? Well, our practice relies heavily upon um, being there at the right time, at the right place for the right clients. And so to have AI do an automatic response when there's an inquiry after hours or electronically through our social media uh, postings is key. And then to have that artificial intelligence take that information that we receive from these potential leads and automatically transfer it into the intakes portion of NEOS it's just been a lifesaver because in the morning when my uh, staff come in, they'll see the new potential intakes. The information that they've given mm -hmm. through the web or the inquiry post is already there. So you don't have to ask the potential client the same information twice, which for some people that's like, you know, you're not paying attention. I'm not important to you. But if you only ask it once, you have paid attention to it. You can confirm it. But at the bottom line is it gives a more sincere approach and reception to those incoming inquiries. And AI has been the basis for doing that. It automatically takes that, asks a few more questions. We get a little bit more information. And then we only have a few things we need to narrow down uh, the next day. Oh, I love what you're doing with technology. Um, you mentioned, <clears throat> so how much time would you say that you save during this process? And especially what additional benefits might you get from it? You just mentioned the client satisfaction, time savings, but is it, are there other benefits you might want to discuss? Well, it's it's more than just okay. the time. The time savings, I would say, is at least two, two thirds of the time. So we've chopped 60% or more off, off the time. And that's through the remedial tasks like data entry or transferring information into contacts, things like that, or getting the right salutation for them. The, the AI, you know, it, depending on what type of case they're inquiring about, it asks certain questions to go back to that information with them. And that saves not just a ton of time, like I said, probably cuts at least two thirds of the time out, but the time it saves that we don't see is even more important. One transposition of that phone number, copying it from your intake on your website or something into your program, and then you know you give it to somebody in your office, that number is not valid, I can't reach them. I don't know how you calculate that because you don't know you lost that lead or you lost that client connection. So that is invaluable in and of itself. That is terrific. <clears throat> Pardon me. Paul, what about you? What AI are you using? Well, it's funny, you know, when AI first hit the hit the streets essentially a year ago, uh, and it hit the legal community how we were going to use it. Uh, there's there's the AI of legal research or brief writing or motion writing. And and I think AI in that use was defined early on when the gentleman relied on an AI brief. I think we've all heard about it and uh, chat GPT actually cited fake law, right? And it really put a, uh, whoa, it really told us in the legal community, you really, if, if we're talking about legal documents that we're talking about, 
you you it, we're not there yet. Okay, and of course your Lexus, your Westlaw, your all your other uh, legal research companies are saying they have AI. They have AI. You know, AI <clears throat> AI is the cloud of today. You know, years ago everybody thought, hey, I'm in the cloud. I'm in the cloud. They didn't really know what it was. Uh, just because something says AI doesn't mean it's actually using artificial intelligence, right? But we as consumers may look at that shiny object and say, hey, it says AI, so this is what I want. So, you know, that's where it kind of gets a little wonky in the legal research and writing side. And we're not using it in that yet. You know, we're not we're not we're not relying on that yet because we don't want to end up like that other like that other uh, attorney who relied on it. Currently, we're using it for our marketing and management. So what do I mean by marketing and management? Well, you know. I'm sorry, you, you may be the best law firm in the entire world. If you can't get clients to come in, you're, you're, you're the best lawyer doing nothing. And so uh, we market to our existing database. Uh, we uh, send out, we have blog entries. Um, we do social media posts and things of that nature. So what do we do? So we come up with a legal idea that we want to talk about. Instead of just trying to come up with it out of scratch, right? We can throw it into an AI engine of some sort and kind of distill the facts a little bit, kind of kind of figure out where we want to go. So with our blog entries, we do it. Uh, and, and, and they're not, these do not supplant the actual document. I mean, these are assisted tools. These are something to help you. Uh, you can't just send it to chat GPT, say, do something and just throw it on your website um, or, or send it to your clients. You know, if you do any database marketing and when you send emails to clients, you know, the whole idea is for them to open them up. So that subject line is extremely important. So to come up with a catchy subject line for that person to open up that email is extremely important, but you can't go too far because what happens is then uh, your, 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 the email client may, you know, spit that um, email back. It'll go into promotions. It'll go into spam. And, and now you just wasted, you know, you think you have 10,000 people in your database when it only gets to about a thousand people and only about 15% of those people open it. So currently we're using it that way. We're also using it within our, um, within the actual use of our case management software, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, the main things we're doing it now is the marketing and management and trying to trying to really make it easier for our marketing department to come up with those great ideas uh, uh, to, to you know to continue that relationship with cur uh, current clients and uh, clients we'd like to we'd like to have. You know what I actually I can relate to that I, I, as a product marketer I use ChatGPT quite often and like you said I use it as a supplement I'm not going to send out something that ChatGPT has has created verbatim, but it's a great source of new ideas. It's a great source of um, <clears throat> distilling a complex idea into something easily digestible with people. So I love me some chat GPT. That's great that you're able to use it for that. So what AI tools are you exploring for 2024? Well, you know, so you can't you can't open your email box without somebody saying they have something for for artificial intelligence in your community, whether it's marketing, management, legal, whatever. What we're really looking at. So as I've to be efficient in my business is what I really want to be. OK, I want to I want to be I want to be able to get more things done in less amount of time without sacrificing the quality. And that's that's important. I'm, we don't do, I don't do cheap. OK, and, and if something costs a lot of money I sp and there's a value to it, I'm going to spend a lot of money on it. That's pretty much how I work. But for my business, I want to be efficient. So what does that mean? I looked at my company and I said, what are the most time consuming tasks that my office does? One of the major ones, and I'm going to talk about pre-litigation for a second, because our office has a pre-litigation department and a litigation department. So we're mainly an injury firm, whether it's social security, disability, workers' compensation, or personal injury, or automobile accidents, medical malpractice, especially medical malpractice. And here's the issue, the, the reading of medical records. It's huge. We can talk a little bit later about the how you obtain medical records, but right now it's talking about the reading of medical records. Paralegals take a tremendous amount of their time to read medical records. They read the medical records. They create a chronology. As they're looking in those medical records, they're trying to find out what? They're trying to find out diagnoses. They're trying to find out complaints of pain. They're trying to find out where the patient or client went after that specific medical care. So what we're looking to do, and we are starting to do it with different products, is uh, having AI take a stack of medical records, and of course they're all they're all uh, uh, digital, by the way. But you know the the, the analogy is to take a uh, the imagery is take a stack of medical records, throw it in this chipper shredder, and then mm -hmm. out comes this beautiful medical chronology which does everything. 
through time, right? I mean, it's the life cycle of your case, whether it's past medical history, the history and the, uh, the medical treatment that your client received from the time of the accident. And it distills that into a chronology, identifying the CPT and diagnostic codes, the complaints of pain, the diagnosis, where they went. And, and the most important part about that is this. Number one, it's a incredible time saver, 90%, easy 90%. More importantly is quality. Now, if you pick the right provider to give you this information, you may have two, three, four, five, and 20. I don't know how big your firm is. Litigate uh, paralegals that are uh, doing these medical chronologies for you, okay? You, have you can have the same medicals, have five different people do it and have five different medical chronologies. Right. And they're going to find different things that are important. But once you identify a good provider for your uh, medical chronology through AI, you're going to have consistency, something that you can rely on. And you don't and your paralegals can can instead of getting tired reading all the time, can focus on other things like client communication, making sure they get to their medical care. Real quick, before I jump off of that real quick, the, the in the litigation side of things, it's also extremely important when you're when you're answering discovery, when you're preparing documents for your experts to review. You don't want to pay your expert hours and hours and hours of time to read medical records when you can give them a starter with a wonderful, beautiful chronology. Um, and uh, so and, and if you have to do whatever if you're doing, complaints, uh, any motion practice, you, the, those medical chronologies is, is just going to be off the chain. I mean, it's, it is it is one of the major time savers. And when I mean, Frank said something earlier about, you know, 60%, this is clearly, and it's true. I agree with Frank. I do the same thing. I, I The medical chronology and the review of medical records uh, through AI is a major time saver. No, <clears throat> I really hope that uh, we're able to do that for you with uh, Neos AI. That's actually part of our roadmap for next year. That's and right. honestly, I think that your paralegal will love you as well. It doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> How couldn't they love me? What are you talking about? Come on. No, I'm just kidding. Put um, you to sleep. Frank, what about you? What AI tools are you exploring? I'm sorry, one more time. What AI tools are you exploring for 2024? For 2024, well, we're, we're following a little bit of what Paul's talking about. It's even more important when you're a solo practitioner with two or three paralegals working for you. Um, if I can get off these menial tasks and get those to somebody or something like AI that's going to scan them and have my paralegal do something live, perhaps like meeting with a client in the office, that's a big time saver. So um, the the things that we've been uh, trying to get it to do is save time in, in the future is we want to go into the medical record summarization chronology, if you will, in the future as well. And we want to categorize um, the AI to cater to those keywords and things that are coming into our office and people are finding us. So if you're finding us with a certain keyword, we're using the AI from the data that we're getting from the Google Analytics to basically polish our web page and our and our SEO, um, uh, if you will, hooks or things that bring them to keywords that bring them to us so we can uh, increase traffic in there. So that for 2024, that's where we see it going. Um, Paul's absolutely right what he said about AI. I don't consider it a hard research tool. I don't think you can ask it uh, to create an, a legal argument for something. What I do think, and just as you said, it is a supplement at this point. You take a draft of a document. Let's see what AI has to say about it. You run it through there. You come back with something new. on your, We do this on just about every email or word processing document that we're using that's not technically related. Uh, I gave an example once of um, a demand letter. And honestly, I, I, I do the plaintiff side, the injury side, and I had an insurance adjuster on the other side of the case. This insurance adjuster was not very responsive to the demand. It seemed like I couldn't get anything through. I took the response I had prepared and I asked it, hey, make this a little nicer, make this a little kinder, make this a little bit more detailed. I kid you not, the case, the next call that came over was a call from the adjuster accepting our demand and the case was settled. That was probably, and this was about three months ago, and I, I was having the worst day. That was probably what sold me <laughs> on AI is it took my emotion, extracted it, turned it around, because I was ready to just call and light this person up because they weren't getting the facts. All of a sudden, I get this settlement acceptance of my demand. I, and it wasn't a policyless demand, so it was, it was something the adjuster actually had to think about. It was great. And I thought, I got to start using more of it. So that's when I got the supplement for my word processing. 
That's when I got the uh, add-ins, if you will, for my uh, email. And I use them all the time. And I'll draft the, the draft. Thing. Could I add anything to this? Run it through there. What tone do you want to convey? So in the future, it's going to be data mining for 2024. And it's going to be polishing our existing work product. I've seen other letters from other attorneys. I'm like, wow, that's pretty vibrant. That's really uplifting. And they're communicating something that's in an adversarial setting in litigation. But the way they're saying it, which we all know, it's the way you say it, not always what you say. I think that's going to that's going to forge a, a lot of uh, headway in 2024 with our practice. Sounds like you have some really great uses lined up for AI. Thank you. Um, I think, honestly, we're going to see a ton of innovative AI tools come out in 2024. Well, like you said, you can't, you know, swing a cat without running into 15 different emails from companies talking about their AI technology. And, you know, Assembly is one of those. I mentioned that our Neos AI um, will be releasing that next year. So it's actually embedded into Neos. So you don't have to um, go outside your existing workflows. So I'm very excited to see what happens with that. Okay, let's pivot a bit. Let's talk about the biggest challenges you are facing right now and the technology that you're using to solve them. Let's start with you, Paul. Okay, so <clears throat> the biggest the biggest challenge I'm running into now, literally since uh, COVID, uh, has been labor. I mean, where to find good labor, whether it's clerical work, paralegal, skilled paralegal work, whether it's trying to hire attorneys. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I know I'm old. OK, I mean, I feel like if you're not you're over not. 50, I feel like if you're not over 50, you don't know how to work hard and um, had a difficulty hiring attorneys, younger attorneys who, uh, you know, you train them the ropes and all of a sudden they think they're Jerry Spence and they want to go out on their own. Or um, you 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 find an employee and, and for some reason they always have a phone in their hand or an earbud in their ear. And I'm like, if I'm only getting 80 percent of you. Why do I pay you 100 percent? So what have we done? Um, we've gone to virtual assistants. Um, so where have we gone to virtual assistant? And what is a virtual assistant? Basically, I mean, it's funny how they call it a virtual assistant, but it is, a virtual assistant is somebody who is not in your office somewhere else, usually offshore, uh, that is providing service for you, whether it's legal service, whether it's paralegal service, whether it's uh, uh, administrative service. So we first started using uh, virtual assistants in our call center. Okay, we have about eight people in our call center uh, here on premises uh, during the day. And their job is to answer all the telephone calls. And I'll be honest with you, I mean, it's, it's hard getting people to come in every single day. So using the virtual assistants, we use a service. And, and what I've learned is, and most of these people that we are using are coming from Central America. What I've learned is they are providing a tremendous, they can't wait to work. They love to work. They, they, they beat the boss. I like to say they beat the boss to work every day. Right. And um, their, their, their vigor for work. You have not seen that type of, of attitude in, in 10 years easy. Now, what's nice about doing that in our world is you don't pay that as person, as an employee, you pay a service to provide you that service. And at this point in time, you don't, you don't pay payroll taxes. You don't pay health insurance. You don't pay social security. You don't pay workers' compensation insurance. It's an incredible savings. And these people are being paid fair wages where they are. There's no question because I actually spent mine's a little higher than some of the other companies out there. And I'm happy to do so because the quality I'm getting is, in, is getting incredible. But the uh, it's, a, it's a net net savings. Now, what is important about that? You got to have a case management software here. You got to have tremendous case management software and you must have tremendous voice over IP software. Tele telephony software, excuse me, I can say voice over IP. Those who don't understand it 100%, telephony software, your phone system. Now, fortunately, we have been with Neos for a long time and, and, and its predecessors for a long time. And the lovely part about being in the cloud or being browser-based is this person, this virtual assistant can be from Columbia, okay? And when somebody calls on the telephone, they have no clue that they're not sitting in our office, the connectivity, the ability to communicate, the ability to send documents through DocuSign or whatever you're doing is flawless as if they were sitting right here. And that is, it is, and I told you earlier, being efficient, getting more done with less time and less money. And that's what we're doing. We're also using virtual assistants in other positions, in other administrative positions. I'm just now starting to use them in the paralegal position uh, where you can get a virtual assistant who actually has a law degree. OK, and you're not paying, uh, uh, you know, that you're not, they're not going to be your lawyer, but they can provide you great paralegal services of that nature. So, you know, the ability to have 
you know, your, 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 your business to be able to have people disperse throughout the whole country and it be flawless. Now, it doesn't come without problems. You must have some, you, I always say, look, they are part of your family. If you, it's, they are not a set it and forget it type of uh, solution. You have to communicate with them constantly, right? There's you have meetings and we do that. We have meetings, we have DM, uh, direct messaging, excuse me, that they do daily, constantly. So they, and you make them really part of your family. And when you, and they've never had experiences like that and you make them part of your family, they're going to be here forever. And and so far we've had tremendous success doing that. Oh, wonderful. Finding the right per company, finding the right people to work for your company. It's just hard. It doesn't matter where you are, um, what you do, but finding quality people, you know, it's not easy. And I'm glad that the use of technology is still bringing such great results for you. So Frank, have you tried virtual assistance or a geographically dispersed workforce? We are, a, I'd say, about a step behind what Paul's talking about. One of the things when we did try it, yes, we had tried it. One of the things we did try it is it was a test call, and the caller was asked some questions about the local geography. Is your office by X, Y, and Z? And we're hoping that with the infusion of chat GPT, we can help answer that because, it, like Paul says, you, they don't know that person is not in your office. And so we need to make sure that they have that local famili familiarity with the, the landmarks in the area. Um, if we, we're in talk kind of to see if we can do that, that's really one of the things I think for the virtual assistance that we need. One of the things I think Paul and I talked about on virtual assistance is that it expands the hours of your office. I think Paul, if you would, I mean, if you have somebody in a time zone three hours ahead of you and somebody in a time zone three hours behind you, now you're going from an eight hour period of operation to a 14 hour period of operation. And the research that I see tells me that uh, in, in my market, the best time to reach people is between 5 and 9 p.m. and then on the weekends for the kind of work that we do with the consumers. And that's where a virtual assistant can come in. I have mine currently set. So if it's uh, if the call meets a certain type of criteria, it rings on my cell phone uh, wherever I am. So uh, again, that's keeping my office open for that call. You never know when that one great client is going to come in. And, uh, and even the existing clients know how to use it. And so having having somebody available to answer the phones with them, that's how a small firm like ours is able to compete with some very large, well-known, well-established, well-respected firms in our market is uh, we have to give the personable service. And uh, Paul's got a, gr a great point that these people do want to work. There's never a question like, oh, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to call you. That's not an issue. They want to get these things done. They want to get the, the the service that you've hired them to do to you. I haven't been as good about reaching out to them and including my team as Paul's done, but that's definitely something that I think would give them a shot in the arm and increase performance. Well, I'm thrilled to hear that you guys have found such great success with the virtual assistants. So let's move on to analytics and technology and how using dashboards have helped you reach your current goals. Paul, you must love analytics, am I right? Yes, you have to. You have to. You have to love analytics. I mean, you know, for years lawyers have just practiced law, and and, and as, as long as they're able to pay the bills, they're happy with how their practice is. And 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 that type of uh, that type of law firm is a recipe for disaster. You you really need to be able to identify the 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 temperature of your firm, the quality of your firm. You know. Uh, you, you need some type, you need types of dashboards to, to find the health of your firm, because if you're not doing it, the guy down the street's doing it. And what's even worse is the guy from the city, or excuse me, of the, of the, of the county or the state next to you is sneaking in, taking your clients because they are watching all of this stuff. So uh, what do I love about the, our software dashboards? Okay, what do I and what do I watch? I mean, there's so many things to watch. We call these key performance indicators, right? KPIs. You've heard them all the time. Oh, what is it? Oh, a KPI, something that indicates the health of something. So every morning, I open up my my Neos. I look at my different dashboards. I look at how many cases, how many calls we got the day before, how many leads we got the day because calls don't mean leads. How many leads we got the day before? How many times? And, and all this is in the dashboard. It's incredible. Um, how many of these leads do we want? How many of these leads are we chasing? Because as you know, many of you get new cases through email, right? Whether it's an outside service, whether it's fine law, whether it's your 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 web uh, 
your web form fill or your buying leads or whatever you're doing, they're coming into your office through an email. Now you are chasing those people. How many? Then you need to know. Uh, remember, you want to know if that's if that's economical for you to do, how much you're paying for them. You want to know how many of those leads that come through that source actually turn into a case, right? This is all about re return on equity. Excuse me. Yeah, return on equity, return on investment. So those are important. Then we can move after we do all the intake type of things. That's one temperature, right? I mean, you, you, your firm is a is a is a is a life of, of a case, right? It comes in, you work on it, you resolve it, maybe you litigate it and you settle it. And then there's the other part about money. So let's continue to talk about that because dashboards, which I love again, as a manager of a firm, okay? And even if you're a small firm and you're the major attorney, then you do all the work, you still have to put some management time in there, okay? And this is why dashboards are so important. You don't have to run a billion reports or have somebody run a billion reports for you and then throw something on a, on a spreadsheet for you when you can have all dashboards sitting there looking. Now, let's talk about it. How about, um, how about, employee performance okay how many how many cases does each one of those people have where in the life cycle of that case does that person have it is it a treating uh are they creating a demand are they negotiating whatever it is okay and there's dashboards that you can tell you it gives you the health of your firm maybe you need there is one any of you on national listservs everything you see every time how many is the right number of cases that a paralegal should have okay and it's different for every firm however by having these dashboards, you know exactly how many cases your your staff has. How about how many are in demand? How many? How long? The the number one everybody likes to talk about is time on desk. Okay, how efficient is that employee? Now, we learn all that. We find out how many are in demand or how many you're negotiating. Or let's talk about litigation. All right, how much are your litigation? And remember, I told you earlier we have pre litigation and litigation. Our litigation attorneys. How many cases do they have? Do they have too many? What are the size of those cases, right? Maybe this guy's only got five cases, but they're all $10 million cases each. And another person has 50 or 100, but they're all $5,000 cases. All these are important to find out where your case, where, where your, where, uh, where your uh, office is, the health of your office. Now, let's talk about the important part, money, money. There is no question that with the, with the correct and and and, and well-designed dashboards, you can find out, look, because many times people will settle a case. Great, settle the case. You put the file down and then all of a sudden you go, hey, where are that? why haven't we seen that check? Well, if you're not running reports or you're not have, if you don't have that on your dashboard to say, hey, that case was settled on this day and we have not received a check yet, right? That's going to tell you, knock on that door and ask for that check. So, you know, all of those things are extremely important. What I love what Neo says, I, I I simply just hit one button and I have an entire dashboard for all of those different things uh, for your key uh, performance indicators. And it's extremely important. If you're not doing it, you, it, you know, you, you have to measure it in order to get better, simply put. And if you're not measuring it, you can't get your, you can't get your firm any better. Yeah, you actually, you took the words right in my mouth. The what gets measured gets managed, right? Peter Drucker? That's true. You know, it's it's so critical to understand the management part of a law firm. I mean, this is the stuff they don't teach you in law school. And having these dashboards is just a very accessible way of being able to understand your law firm itself. Frank, how are you using dashboards? Uh, just what you said, Marissa, that that gets measured can get improved. If you have no idea what it is, like Paul said, and I was like that for many years. Hey, we're paying the bills. The lights are on. You know, this case, this person's happy. And then I'm like, I'm just, I'm working just as hard as I was five years ago. And, you know, whether I have a good year or not, uh, I can't really determine. I don't know what a good year is. And then one day somebody said, where are you getting your cases from? And luckily the time they asked me that came about the time that I got plugged in with the NEOS dashboards. So every morning when I come in, I have a pie chart that shows where those new cases are coming from. And when I get the call from the people to do the SEO or the marketing pitch, it's easy to do the ROI. Well, we're not getting anything from your ads. It's not really working to help us. I've had things I've used before. No business come from that. With the NEOS dashboards, I can see where those are coming. I'm doing the same thing Paul's doing. I'm trying to track the number of calls, see how many of those calls are turned into intakes, uh, see how many of those are. We're even re tracking referrals now with NEOS analytics. How long does it take for somebody to sign up with an attorney that we referred them to that doesn't handle the area that we handle? Uh, we check every 90 days, uh, follow-ups, how many of those are never calling back, how many of them have actually settled a case, and we've actually seen something come back to us on it. Uh, those kind of analytics are great. 
The best one that I've used right now in a smaller firm, very so many of these are built in, past due checklist items by person assigned to them. So how many things, you know, and, and we, we try to, to gauge them, as we said, we measure them. So usually every Monday I have a report sent to my email uh, of how many past due checklist items I have, how many other members of my staff have. And we can say, look, your, 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 the, your past due checklist items, as Paul said, KPIs, K performance, key performance indicators, your past due checklist items are going up. You've been here, you haven't been out being absent. What's going on? What, what, do we need to fix something? Uh, or they're going down. Oh, that's even better. You know, what, what has changed? Oh, we, we, you know, we use the NEOS templates for this and those letters are going out 10 times faster than they used to uh, with the, with the uh, document generation. So the dashboards are the main thing for the analytics. I get more out of the NEOS analytics and there's reports that are built in than I do when I see the Google analytics and some of the other analytics about SEO, clicks, time per second on your website, that can that can overwhelm you. Information is great if you can use it. If you give me too much information, I don't have a chance to use it. All it's going to do in my situation is is confuse me. The neos, especially with the graphs, bar graphs, and the pie graphs, kind of summarizes it down real quickly. I can see it at a glance. I've got in my head what's working. I've got in my head what trends I see from an employee's checklist items, and I kind of know what trends I see throughout the year when the phone isn't ringing. Hey, we're, you know, we're in our first year, so we haven't been able to track it. But there are some trends when we're going to be busier or less busier. When we're tracking the number of calls, if we can track it from last year and see if there's a change, oh, this is a slow time of year. This is a busy time of year. Typically, the beginning of school in September seems to be a little bit busier for us, and then it slows down toward the end of the year. And it causes worry. And that used to make me think, oh, something's not going right. Well, when I see that it's part of an, a regular cyclical trend, that puts me at ease, Practitioners, that allows you to take that vacation when time is slow because you've got the data and you're able to compare it. You don't have to worry about the business not coming in. This is the slow season. Let's take a break. Let's take a vacation. Let's retool something in the office. And Niels has allowed me to do that with its dashboard. And as I go deeper and deeper into it, I'm adding new fields. For example, date check received, date check issued. You just add these new fields to each one of these cases, and that becomes something new that you could track. So I really like it. I really love it, and it's helping out a great bit. Marissa, can, I jump, in on, Marissa, can I jump in on one thing Frank said? Because this is something important. He said he gets uh, reports emailed to him every week. Now, we do as well. And who emails those things to you? Our case management software. Neos does. Now, why is that? And we also have reports that don't email to me, but they email to outside vendors, okay? Like like whoever provides your website services or who does your SEO services or does your LSA ads or things or your PPC buy, okay? And the information that you give them does not have to have any client information other than email and telephone number. It's your case number and email and telephone number. So it's very powerful. And I must have 10 or 15 of them that get emailed to me, to other people, uh, inside and outside of of our practice, so I don't have to do that, right? And it's automatic, which is just incredible. And if something changes, you just change the report a little bit, and then it it keeps updating. So I'll tell you that that is something that I really really enjoy. Uh, when I come in on Monday, all those reports are just sitting there. And I'll tell you one of the best ones, one of the best ones. How much in settlements did we settle last week? Right. Okay, soup. That's the most favorable one to see when you come in on a Monday morning. It's in a nice round number, a nice big number. But uh, th those those type of reports, that automation is great. Marissa, yeah. let me jump in and add what what Paul is saying. Um, it is. I mean, to have those reports come in and to save you the time from having to click, especially when you do them every week. I try to do them every day. That was a little bit too much. Weekly is probably the most you want them, but it, it goes back to the how important it is to have good data tracking and good entry by your staff. And we've had a few issues with that, to be quite honest with you. And what have we done? We've plugged them into NEOS University. I thought, oh, everybody knows this. When you finish an item in NEOS, you mark the checklist item done or, you know, you reschedule it. I was surprised that some of the people and some of these great workers that Paul talks about that are over 50, 
they didn't realize when the checklist item was done, they needed to mark it done. Otherwise, it came in the report and it kept showing up. I'm like, I know you did this work. Why is it here? Hey, there's a section on this in Neos University. Sit down and listen to it. And the, the numbers show that the problems got better. That's a really good point about having accurate data. I mean, your results are only as good as the data that you're inputting into it. And I am beyond thrilled to hear that the reports and the dashboards have been so helpful for both of you. So why don't we take a little turn to the software applications that you're using to run your firms efficiently? Frank, what software are you using outside of NEOS? Well, a lot of them were outside of NEOS. And thankfully, Niels on its, uh, I think, with, is it the Azure platform with Microsoft? Yep. I don't know much about it. I'm a driver. I'm not a mechanic when it comes to computers. I'm a user, not a person. But I know that certain things I hear, and it seems to um, attract other vendors or outside app providers to uh, to help you with this. I used to call them programs, but apparently everything is an app now. So that's <laughs> the new Right. You know, do you have the program for that? Yeah, I have yeah. a floppy disk here. You know, that's done. Uh one of the major ones has been uh, the SMS, the texting feature. We had that as a standalone feature, and it was an amazing application. We could text using the same number from our office that would come up on the recipient's phone. We could get pictures. People were constantly sending us pictures of documents. And when they would email them to us in the old, uh, before this, they were just difficult to handle. Now with this SMS app, they can send it to this, they come over on a format that's very easy to pull down, pop it into Adobe or your, or your photo program, change it to the format you want. We usually use PDF or JPEG. And now we have a clean document that sometimes we can even OCR, optical character recognition, so we can scan it to know what the text of it says when we do a search for documents. So the SMS application has been a good one. It was outside, we were going in and out of programs. Lo and behold, I kind of said something one day to somebody at NEOS, and then I get a phone call that they're going to do an integration for it. So now it's integrated, and those those texts actually come into the file. So I sent Paul a text, say, what day, time does the meeting start? And I well, I got to hear my text. I sent you something, and it automatically goes out through the app. I love it. And it's been um, even further enhanced with the Neos Premium Texting feature, uh, which is one of the apps that I really um, – I was on the fence about it because we had this other existing app. But the Neos uh, Premium Texting actually um, integrates even better in, in the way that you can control who it's going to come back to when you send something out, who's going to respond to it. Uh, you can give it a classification for later on in your notes to see that. So that's been our biggest change has been the, the SMS probably in the last, we've had a SMS going for about a year and a half. In the last six months with a premium feature coming in from Neos, the texting feature, that's been a great enhancement. Um, the other thing that's it, it's it's old hat for other people, it's new for us, is the DocuSign integration. And uh, man, it just works great. You look at something on the online, you you send it to them, you get a little indication when it comes back, and it automatically tucks the signed version into your Neos file, so you don't have to worry about saving and duplicating and and uh, dropping your signatures in there. It's all done. It's great. Uh, we're looking into more of the Dropbox uh, integration now at this time because of some of the uh, new features that Dropbox has added. And guess what? Neos is an integration with that. So we've been you know, trying to put that together. Oh, it sounds like the SMS and the DocuSign have been incredibly helpful. And you know, as a millennial, I hate paper. So I love me some DocuSign. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, do you use the SMS texting or do you use DocuSign? What are you using? Yeah, so we definitely use uh, premium texting, and it's actually surprisingly inexpensive, by the way. Whenever, oh, that's something extra. It's really not. It's very inexpensive, number one. And of course, we do it. Because because in the old days, you used to call your clients. Uh, then they used to email them. Now they don't do any of that. Now you text them. And now they even have a hard time returning your tech call and a text. But the point is, uh, I'll tell you real quick with that. Uh, I saw somebody put a question in the, uh, in the, in the question about, uh, graphs and pies and this that the other about is that part of intake pro i will tell you one of the things that we do and we do have intake pro and yes we do have all of those graphs and charts but we also have automation and what do i mean by that when we talk about texting and emailing you know when certain things get checked off on the email excuse me on the checklist automatically that somebody however you design it gets an email and a text about that and why is how important is that that's super important because 
what, what's worse than a client calling all the time? Hey, I'm checking on my suitcase. Hey, I'm checking on my suitcase. When you, as you go through the life of your case and you can, you mark things done, demand sent, demand received, money received, whatever it is, appointment made, appointment made. Okay. For, for, for your settlement conference. And then an automatic text and email gets sent out to them to say what, where, when, why, and how it's phenomenal. And again, it's, it's, it, this is added stuff that your staff doesn't have to do. And it keeps your clients aware, but you're talking about integrations. Um, and, and what's important is and with DocuSign, oh, part of uh, that Intake Pro, our DocuSign, you know, our call center has to do the one, uh, the, the one call close is what we call it. They are DocuSigning with one click. I mean, one click, our retainer agreement to the client, uh, to the p potential new client. And while they're on the phone, it is so fast. It is done in less than 15 seconds that they sign it and it's already back into the system, signed DocuSign with the summary uh, in there. My point about that is if you're not using DocuSign like that or having using DocuSign to have a uh, settlement documents uh, signed, the old days were here. Yeah, if you want your check, here's your, here's your release, get your release signed. Then you had to mail it to your client. There's postage, there's letter, there's time. Then you had to get it back. If you got it back, the postage stinks now. I mean, you can't get anything in the mail within two weeks anymore. And that's just delaying the time for you to get your settlement check. And then you do it through DocuSign. And it's like in seconds. Now, DocuSign costs money. I get it. But it's actually a savings. It's a savings when you include time, paper, toner, and all this other stuff. And you then you you got the release emailed to you. Then you release it back. Oh, but my people want notary. No, 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 no. I explain it to every one of them. You send me the release. I'm gonna send it back to you today. DocuSign. Will you accept it? Yes, I will. Thumbs up. Keep going. But the more important part is, and Frank said it, staying within the software. Yes. Okay. Having, oh, I can use this. I can use something else. I can use something else. That's not efficient where you're double intaking or you're double data entering. So it's extremely important to keep it in the, uh, in the software. One of our first integrations that we did was, and I'm telling you, if you aren't doing this, you must do this. And that is, is a document, uh, is a medical record retrieval service. If you're not using a medical record retrieval service, you're way behind the times. This is something that is completely, I say completely, you have very little oversight, uh, outsourced where another company can take care of this for you, where they go get the medical records, they get, they comes back OCR, which means optical character recognition. So it can be searched. You can say something about that in a second. Um, it automatically gets uploaded into your Azure, into your cloud docs or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it automatically gets attached to the case. It automatically updates the value screen so you know what you got, when you got it, how much the bills are, and all of this. Now, is there a cost for that service? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. There's a cost for everything. You want everything free? You're not going to get it. But what happens? That, that company that does all this for you, the time savings. Why are you having your paralegals that you pay big money sitting on a phone checking on the status of a medical record when you have probably another paralegal two cubicles down and they're waiting because that's the one who's talking to the same medical provider? It makes no sense. The great part about, if I'm not mistaken, we use one company, but uh, Neos integrates with like several, okay? And it doesn't matter if you're a small firm or you're a big firm. Hey, I do know certain companies only want the big ones. I understand that. But there are other companies that will do smaller firms as well. But it is something that you can outsource a, a ministerial act of one of your of one of your high paid paralegals to use uh, a medical record retrieval service. So what's important about that? Because I'm going to back up just a skosh back to a little bit of AI, because how about. When you have a database, you you have medical records galore of all of your clients. Okay, they're they're all up in the cloud, and then all of a sudden you find out there's a new mass tort. There's a new mass tort. Okay, and it's uh, there's the names of these things. Uh, you know, mic microdesia. Okay, oh, did your client take microdesia? You're going to be able to use AI to search all of your prior medical records for indications of people who took that medication. Okay. That, and that's because it's all OCR'd already, and all of your all of your medical records and docs are, are up in the cloud with that. Super powerful things for you to mine your own, because Frank said this earlier, you're mining your own database for other cases. So um, again, whatever integrations or things that you like, um, make sure it, it integrates with your case management software. And fortunately, you know, with, with our, Frank and I are using the same software. 
We love the fact that uh, they there are so many integrations and you're not jumping from software to software to software to make sure you know what's going on with your case. I mean, honestly, it's a no brainer. You have everything right there. And even the small act of adjusting your attention from I'm in my case management platform to I'm in a different software application. It just, it takes a little away from your focus. And if you have to do that dozens and dozens of times a day, it's going to add up. I find myself doing the same thing if what I'm working on is not integrated with another application that I need. So great point about the integrations. Let's move on to our last topic, of talking about the top features for a case management platform. Obviously, having a third-party uh, software that you use most frequently integrated into the platform is critical. What else? Uh, Frank, what about you? What are your top case management features? Well, I've been with case management software. I've opened my office in 2007. We got in with case management software in 2008, but we didn't know how to use it. So it pretty much sat in the folder. And the reason why we didn't use it is because we never had the support that we have now with the current software to do this. And honestly, I stayed away from Neo's predecessor because it seemed like it was more than I could handle. Once Neo's came out, it was into a, a situation being cloud-based that changed everything. Before that, we would use remote desktop. Everything would lag. You might not get an internet connection or it might be too uh, 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 bumpy to get in. When you went to the cloud with Neo's, everything is there and it didn't have to all be in Neos's environment. You could actually bring a document from your desktop and easily put it into your uh, file. It's drag and drop. It's so easy. So the, the uh, going into the cloud and using it that way has been key for us. It allows you to work anywhere. It allows us to have people work in other time zones and other locations on things that don't have to be in our office. And we can work with those people in much uh, more economic scale because we don't need them presently sitting here. We don't need an office space for them. We don't need all the equipment that needs to be set up in a, in a specific uh, type of uh, 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 backdrop for them to work in. So that's that's part of it on there. And then the other part that's really been helping out a lot is uh, the simplicity and the, the the tracking. I mean, Neos is the as the the checklist and that's what drew me to it to begin with the checklist is key to case management software um i've got a, somebody in my office two offices away who has post-its all over their desk and i said <laughs> this has to stop this has to be in here and we used to have a thing where we'd say if it isn't in neos it didn't happen so if you make a phone call put it in neos and then you have to go look at that checklist have we made that monthly client care call mark it done, and guess what? It should automatically repeat 30 days from now so you don't have to think about it and schedule it again. So as far as case management software, I mean, it's it's a no-brainer that automation is key, but having one that you can configure, you know, when you refer a case out, we check on it every 90 days. I check on it, Marissa, are you taking the case? Okay, I not yet, haven't heard from them. Click it done, comes up 90 more days, call back. I don't have to go and, and run this stuff down and, and check all these post-it notes and check strings on my finger and, and, and you know things on the refrigerator door when I get in there. So that has been key for Neos, uh, for me with Neos, the case management checklist and routine and scheduling. Okay, so we're talking about cloud-based system, obviously, for critical for the virtual assistants, for a geographically dispersed workforce from working from anywhere, the checklist, which takes the mental load away of what do I need to do next? What am I missing? What do I need to keep up on? When is the statute of limitations? All of these things, they're in the case management platform and you don't have to worry about them. You always know where things stand. That yes. sounds amazing. And by the way, your uh, co-worker with all the uh, post-it notes sounds just like me. I have post-it notes all over the place because without them, <laughs> I'd die. But you know, if I had Neos, <laughs> then I probably wouldn't need all of them. Um, Paul, what about you? What are so, your key case management features? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, the, the, the integrations are are super important. Let me let me give you one real quick. The so you know what are what are some of uh, you know industry software? You know, we all use Word, we all use Outlook. I mean, not everybody, most people use the 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 the, the, the Fortune five hundreds are Word, are Word, Outlook, and the lovely part about that is the collaboration of Outlook to Neos. Okay, the full integration, the Neos calendar is the Outlook calendar. They all, if something happens on one, it happens on the other. Um, you have uh, the integration of merging. Okay, we we have taken merging 
to a new level. And what do I mean by that? Whether it's a Word document, whether it's a PDF document, we do we do federal stuff, right? I mean, we're doing Social Security disability, we're doing longshore workers' compensation cases, and they're all forms that come, or even in your state court, you might have forms that are in PDF. All of these things are integrated where you click a button, merge that, do create that document, and all of a sudden, all the information comes in at, at one at one time. Everything comes in, and all you do is print, sign, and send. It is that fast. Where and I, I've said this before at other uh, other talks, that people have asked me asked me about. It used to take an hour to file a lawsuit, okay, in this one court. Now, since we have everything completely integrated and uh, merged together, it takes we can do three, literally three and a half in one hour. Guys, I got to tell you, I mean, that, talk about time. You know, you're, the time you're freeing up, uh, it, it is game changing time. But the one thing that we've been using more of, and I really encourage people to do, is you have the ability to collaborate. Well, what do you mean by collaborate? The days of having your paralegal print out a document, put it on your desk, where you get to take your red pen and bleed all over it with corrections are gone. Now are the time is where you get a message, ding, something pops up on your screen where your paralegal just said, hey, the complaint in the Jones matter is done. Do you mind taking a look at it? Sure. At the same time, by clicking on it, that document comes up on both screens, and both of them can work on the same file at the same time. You're not printing stuff out. You're not losing stuff. It got stuck in another file. It got underneath the file. You're handling it right then and there or whenever time you want to do it, but that collaboration at, that you can do on that document, and once it's done, it's done. You know, you don't have to sit there and print and send it and correct and print. And send. So the collaboration is just incredible. So those are things that are extremely important that you should be doing, okay, uh, to be efficient and and to get more. I, say, you know, I like to say this. I squeeze every juice, every drop of juice out of that lemon, okay, every single thing. When I'm done, there is nothing left but rind. Um, but that's important if you want to be if you want to be competitive, get more done with less people and save money at the same time. I love it. I mean, the merging documents alone, I can't imagine being a paralegal and having to create a new document for every single case with only slight changes. It sounds so boring and so inefficient. So super happy that Mewis has been able to help with that. So let's see, we have a few minutes left and we have a couple questions in the chat. So uh, someone has said, can you please offer the AI services name as well? So can you be a little bit more specific as to what AI service, talk about the uh, value that the AI is providing? Because we talked about several AI services. So I just want to make sure that we're giving you the right information. Um, and, and Scott Dutton said, uh, do you have a product for insurance defense firms? Scott, I'm not sure um, what Marissa. you're... I yeah. do know the answer to that question. Oh, great. Perfect. Yeah. Having uh, Scott, having done insurance defense for a large company, it was pretty much, I don't want to say a paint by numbers, but it's even more methodical than the plaintiff side. I mean, you're calendaring, you know, when was the, my client served, the insured that I'm defending served? When is the responsive pleading due uh, based on the date they were served? What's the first day that I can propound discovery? All of that stuff is so easily customizable in NEOS by making your own checklist. So I don't think you necessarily need a product for it. This is the product. You just need to set up the checklist. You know, I mean, in the old days, it was, hey, prepare answer, assert, in, uh, insert affirmative defenses one through six, send out discovery. In my case, it'd be limited or unlimited, auto or non-auto, female or male. And I mean, if I had Neos back then, I'd be, I'd be back on the golf course a lot faster than I ever could have been because it can just be set up that way. The tr the the key is setting it up. And so you right, don't need a right. special program for it. It works for insurance defense just fine. Frank, talk about the time. I mean, you 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 can you can track time with Neos as well. And I know you do. We do yeah. it in our long short cases and and you you also do it as well. Yeah, Paul and I talked about this once. Some some people's um practices are built more on um how much time they invest in the file versus how fast they get the case settled. 
either way, in an insurance defense setting, it's usually an hourly practice, or sometimes you're on a flat rate, which I've had those cases before too. This is going to make those cases more profitable. If you've got that checklist done on, on, you know, these first 10 things need to be done, you probably already have it. But Niels would do like those first five things to get the case going, that welcome letter, the uh, initial uh, acknowledgement to the carrier, those kinds of things. And if you can have those things set up so where they're going to be filled in with the information that you've already put in NEOS, it's going to save you a ton of time. You're going to have these things done a lot better. Consistent product. You're going to know in your mind that it went out. And especially with email, not having to send it by fax or anything anymore, with a digital signature and a template that's uh, airtight, it's, it's going to save you a ton of time, which on a fixed rate case allows you to come in and take those cases uh, on a time on desk case, shortens the amount of time. And even on an hourly case, it allows you to take on more hourly cases in the same amount of time. Great. Thanks, Frank. We did have one question. Um, if the webinar is being recorded, yes, it will be recorded. And we will send out the link so you can watch the on-demand recording at your leisure. Share it with anybody that you like. Um, it will probably, we'll be sending it next week. And we had a question from Janet Ritz. What answering service do you use? I'm happy so to jump in there. So, 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 so Frank, so um, so we've had several. Um, I've been with uh, Alert Communications for a long period right now. Um, the sad part about answering services is um, whenever you ask about an answering service, and after I, I call them an after hours or overflow answering service, um, Everybody says, oh, I use this company. Oh, they stink. I use this company. Oh, they stink. And I'll be honest with you. They all stink to some extent. But I'm going to tell you why they why it doesn't stink. I can tell you how to stop making them stink. And that is being on top of your calls. I get an email every day of every lead I had the day before. I get a, I get a, a list of every telephone call that comes in. Then every one of them are recorded. Okay. I record the call before it goes to the call center. So I know how many rings it took before they 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 did that. I have a call center attorney that reviews these things. And the point is, is you know, the wheel stops squeaking when you oil it. So as long as you are on top of whatever outside answering service you're using, um, you're gonna get attention. So the squeaky wheel gets the oil. You know what? My name is Paul, but you would think it's Karen after I'm done talking to my uh, uh, outside uh, call service. Um, but we're using Alert. I've used LIP in the past. I know Apex Chat is uh, is now doing it as well. Um, they're all different price points. I know, uh, is anything the best? The answer is no, but if you stay on top of them, and I'll tell you, there's an integration with Alert, which is nice with uh, the software. We use it through a Zapier product. Um, and like Frank said, everything comes in. He didn't make it a strong enough point. There is no question. There is human error. When something comes in on an email, then you have a staff member having to enter it into your software. There is human error big time. Um, so, but if they're the ones typing it in and it automatically gets integrated, yes, you take the one second to confirm. Oh, Marissa, you said your number was 857-8675309. Perfect. You know you, what it is. So, um, uh, that so my point is it's alert at least uh, it has that integration with neos too i know we had another question about the list of providers that neos offers for automated med chronologies um so the we do have three providers for medical records retrieval services those are lexitas chart squad and yosier at this point they are simply integrated partners that allow you to automatically pull records into NEOS and request them from NEOS. Um, but the AI chronology is coming next year. Um, let's see, someone, I believe this is for Paul. What is the name of the business you're using in South America and what service are they providing? Yeah, so um, it's it's the company I am using is out of Miami and it's called Get Staffed Up. Get Staffed Up. Um, and I, somebody turned me on to that. And I, I know if you tell me my name, you get a, you get an extra deal on something. I know that I don't, I'm not saying that to you. You're the one who asked the question. I didn't offer that. Um, but get staffed up is to get staffed up is the company that we use. And uh, it, we've been extremely satisfied with them. So we are about out of time. I don't see any other questions, but if you think of a question afterwards mm -hmm. or you did not have time to ask a question, then feel free to email Alessandra, A-E-L-S-S-A-N-D-R-A at assemblysoftware.com, and we will get your question answered. So again, Paul, Frank, 
Thank you so much for joining. This has been an, an incredible webinar. You guys are both very, very successful. And we really appreciate you sharing all of your information with our guests. So thank you again. And everybody, thank you for joining. And, uh, have a wonderful rest of your day and a great weekend. Thank you. Okay.